today <clears throat> today is uh, March 2nd, 2017, which means that tomorrow will have been one year exactly uh, since my attempted suicide. I do want to explain uh, that incident and how it impacted my life, but I do want to get a, a little bit of background beforehand. See, at that point in my life, um, I was going through <laughs> what can only be described uh, simply yet uh, in somewhat of a cliche as a rough patch. Uh, I was, I was uh, going, I was going through this outpatient rehab program because I am an addict. Um, and at the time, one year ago, um, I couldn't really accept that. I, I couldn't even admit it. And there is a huge difference between those two things, but I couldn't even admit it. Admit that I was an addict. So I wasn't really taking that program seriously. At the same time, I was, I was in an insanely toxic relationship. Uh, something that now, in hindsight, was, without a doubt, one of the worst things to ever happen to me in my life. But, at the time, I was madly in love with this girl. Madly. Uh, she was my world. She was everything. We had a future plan together. And the relationship was going great. It was. Um, see, the morning of, of March 3rd, um, was just kind of the tipping point in what had been building up over many years. Um, I had been diagnosed with depression and anxiety, um, for about six or seven years now. It's been something that I've always struggled with, most likely always will. Um, I've also recently been diagnosed with synesthesia and obsessive compulsive disorder. And morning of March 3rd, 2016, um, I was fed up with everything. Going through this rehab program was really hard for me because I lacked uh, really any foresight as to how my future was going to be. Um, and the relationship was out, I was in was even worse um, because the relationship had some details about it that I'm not going to get into right now, but that made it tricky to determine what our future was going to be like. That morning, uh, my mother woke me up to go to school as she had been doing since late January because of my rehab program. I, I wasn't driving. And I didn't want to go. You know, I was just... I was kind of having a depressive episode. Um, I didn't want to go. I wanted to stay in bed and do nothing all day. Uh, she got mad at me, which was fair. I mean, I was just being a little brat child that didn't want to go to school. She got mad at me and I started to think about how I was never going to get out of that situation. My relationship was never going to get better. This rehab program was never going to end, and hastily, um, I was very impulsive, and I didn't take the time to think through things, but I, I swallowed a handful of extra strength sleeping medication. in the hopes that I would die. That had been my plan if I was ever going to do it for a very long time. I've had suicidal thoughts, suicidal tendencies for as long as I've had depression and anxiety, but this was my first and, at least to this point in my life, the only attempt I've ever had. Right after I did that, I called the girl that I was dating at the time and I explained to her what I'd done. 
I explained to her that I was picking out my outfit for my funeral. She freaked out and asked me why I was doing it. And she mentioned I was being selfish, which, you know, probably isn't the best thing to say to somebody that's going through a situation like that at the time. That's what she said. Um, I tried to make myself throw up, but it didn't work. So I told my mother that she had to pick me up or I was going to die. Um, she rushed me to the hospital, and by the time I got there, the drugs had already started to set in. So I don't remember much of the intake process, but... I then spent a week in the psychiatric ward of the hospital. At one point they told me that when I had gotten there, if I had gotten there even 30 minutes later, I would have had less than a 5% chance of survival. They told me that my heartbeat got down to 20 beats a minute. That's one every three seconds. I was 30 minutes away from death. And, you know, I, I, it hadn't really hit me for a, a really, really long time. And that one instance in my life, honestly, just kind of faded away. I stayed with this girl for a while after that because I was in love with her. I was. But I'm now a year out from this. And that girl and I have now broken up. Um, that rehab program is over. I did another one, and as of today, I'm 121 days sober. It's four months and a day, which is the longest I've been sober in probably five years. And one thing that it's really inspiring to me, one thing that really lifts me up every single day when I think about it. Is the fact that when I did this, you know, a year ago, I did it because I was scared. I was scared that I had let down my parents. I was scared that this relationship wasn't going to work out. I was scared I was never going to get sober. I was scared I was never going to be happy again. Because everything was so uncertain. One thing now I think about is the fact that I still don't know. I don't know how my future is going to be. I don't know if I'm going to be sober for the rest of my life. I 100% intend to, and I hope that I am. I don't know what my life holds, but I'm not scared anymore. I'm not. And all I had to do was wait. And knowing that I'm not scared is one of the best feelings I've ever had. So I guess the reason why I'm doing this is as a message to anyone out there that's you know, struggling with depression or suicidal thoughts or a bad relationship or anxiety or anything like that. It's just to hang in there. Because one day, you're not going to be scared anymore. Promise.